Huge thanks to Joshua Fremantle for stepping into the breach or plumping himself onto our coach. He's a filmmaker from Lerstoft, uh, been a guest with us in the past. In fact, Joshua was our very last physical guest sitting on the sofa here in the studio before lockdown uh, happened. Uh, we've spoken to him a couple of times over the year, but he has had some very good news this week. That means his dreams of creating a film studio may well come to fruition. On the sofa... Hello, Joshua. Hello, Leslie. Thank you for doing this. Lovely to talk to you. It's lovely to talk to you again. It's, um, you know, coming a bit more frequent now. <laughs> I, know, I was going to say, yeah. Well, it was very bizarre, wasn't it? Because uh, it was, uh, I can't remember the exact date, you probably do know, but you were here one afternoon and then the, that night we were told that people couldn't travel and so on. And the next yeah. day we went to a telephone guest as opposed to sofa guest. So you were the last one to sit on the sofa. That was it was it was a a great privilege, and I think it was also a bit of luck. What has happened? We'll, we'll talk about the, the the news you've had today in a, in a minute. But through the year, what have you managed to do? I mean, you 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 had your film, didn't you? The life of Lurstoff yeah. that you eventually managed to screen, didn't you? Yeah. So I mean, as as I imagine, lots of your listeners would be able to remember. It was it was March last year. I I'd come to talk to you about. Um, you know, near enough the, the the filming coming to an end on my documentary called Life of Lurstoft. Um and then um, I, I was looking to release it in June of, of last year, but obviously um, things changed because of a lockdown and, and all the restrictions in place. Um, so we then obviously went on, I had uh, come on your show again to update everyone and we released it in the end Um in September of last year um, and then really from then on you know I'd obviously released it and I'd finished that project I you know we'd gone into another um, lockdown and I was thinking well I've always had this dream in the back of my head I, I don't know what to do now so why don't I put it together into a business plan so you made a business plan for for your studios because you want to you, and basically you'd love to open a, a, a film studios yeah so my idea is um and uh, under the name sunrise studios is, is to set up um, a community production company uh with the fundamentals of it being set up as a social enterprise uh within Lowestoft. so it wouldn't be a traditional for-profit um production company and any money that is made from traditional commercial work would then be reinvested into the organization to be able to benefit young people um, and mentor them and give them um, the, the skills of, of, of the creative industries, basically. How, how did you get the idea of, of doing it that way? I've always wanted to be able to try and make a change and make a difference in what I do. And I, you know, started putting two and two together, really, um, of, of wanting to sort of bridge a gap of what wasn't, op what wasn't on offer when I went to college um while also doing what i love which is filming um you know so <laughs> having a production company that can that can also offer that just made sense so so you sat down and wrote yourself a, a, a business plan and you, you took it to, did you go straight to, for straight to access community trust because they're the ones who have decided that it all looks very exciting aren't they yeah so um you obviously um, would have seen, um, not everyone listening now, but we released a Dragon's Den video um, yesterday to announce uh, really, you know, my pitch and Emma Ratza, the CEO of Access Community Trust, um, bringing me on to the family to to bring forward some more studios as a social enterprise within the charity. But before that, I was actually recording a podcast with Emma um as part of um a, a wider project within Lowestoft for the recent towns fund and well you know while we were recording that i just just you know wanted to pitch to her in conversation my ideas and what i wanted to achieve and you know with within uh, her role and what she does as a charity she wants to help young people and she really saw potential you know 
within what I really wanted to achieve. And so she came up with the offer. So, so what, what is the plan? Uh, so, so the, the the plan really is is to take it forward now. Um, you know, I, I've um, traditionally, uh, because of my age, found it hard to to get noticed and, uh, um, by some organisations with commercial work, as an example. And now, you know, I'm under the body of a charity and with Sunrise Studios. Um, taking forward commercial work in a different stance, if you like. I'm, I'm, get, I'm being seen differently now. Um, but then also taking forward um, and working on projects that will be able to benefit young people. And then obviously um, <laughs> the long task of, of working towards being able to hopefully one day offer um, qualifications. So, so uh, that sounds it sounds really exciting. I mean, you're not twenty yet, are you? No, I'm I'm still only eighteen. <laughs> it's it's fascinating, isn't it? Because you have been making films, you've made your documentary, but you still find it hard to get people to think that uh, you could do what that. I mean, I know you did one advert, didn't you? you? Did something Google over over the over the last year, but but people don't take you seriously. Is that the problem? Yeah, it's 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 been <laughs> very difficult, but I I think really um, the the documentary has has really helped me with that. You know, it's it's kind of like acted as as an extended CV, if you like, for myself to properly prove to people what I'm able to achieve, and you know that I am a really hard worker, and I will work towards what I want to achieve. Can you explain how, I mean, what have you got at the moment and how are you going to develop your studio? So there'll be you employed by Access Community Trust and, and then will you train other people while you're working? How will it work? Yes. Yeah, so currently, um, um, as I've joined Access Community Trust, um, under my wing is uh, the head of marketing at Access Community Trust. So we also currently also have um, an apprentice um, that does digital marketing for us. So I'm, um, even though he's older than me, 23, also helping to transfer my skills to him. Um, and he will also help um, fundamentally with Sunrise Studios to produce content and take it forward with me. But we will also be looking at, as you just said, um, you know, to be able to benefit other um, young people within um, our local area through training and mentoring, but also um, apprenticeships. And obviously the, the, the big dream is to one day have a creative school in Lowestoft. So, so you will create, but the, the, all the money that comes from that will obviously pay your salary, but it gets ploughed back in so you can help more people? Yeah, and that that um, obviously, as you know, um, the, the, as there's, there's, there's lots of um, charities and, and organisations out there now that, that find getting funding hard. So that, that sort of baseline of, of also having the um, the commercial work coming in there to be able to, 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 to pay for what we want to offer is, um, you know, it's kind of that stability for us to be able to do what we want to do. I, I know you mentioned that you want to be able to provide something that wasn't there for you when you were at school. I, I, you left school because I, I, you've always loved photography, haven't you? And so I think you did photography and media at, at school. You tried college, but it didn't work and just decided to go off and just try and make your own own work. So you would like to fill that gap, would you? Yeah, and and the real gap for me really was, uh, you know, I I I understand that that colleges and education settings are, you know, that they're, they're limited to what they can offer, um, and for me it was because when I had applied for it, you know, I was actually really looking forward to it, but. Um, it was always perceived that it was going to be a hundred percent practical, and unfortunately, I got there. I was three to four months in, and I hadn't touched a camera once the whole time, and it was all written coursework. And and as uh, you know, a young creative and, and me wanting to get my creativity out there, and you know, and get out their hands on doing stuff it, it just it just wasn't for me it was kind of slowing me down and I was also still create you know I was in the middle of creating the documentary then 
So I didn't want that to be a block. So I took the decision to, to, to drop out so I could carry on and, and, and pay my way forward. So really, you know, I, I'm wanting to be able to offer what I didn't get at college, which would be the hands on practical, you know, job skills of how, you know, how to use a camera and, and editing and stuff like that. Is it? I, I, you're such an inspiration to young people because you really have gone out there and fought for what you want, haven't you? <laughs> it's it, that that's that's still really shocks me to hear that, Leslie. Every time, and um, yeah, I, I I really do <laughs> I do work hard and I, I try my best. And it's I, it, for me, it's the other thing. It's it's really rewarding to be able to see as well that as a young person, I am being able to, um, you know, connect with other young people. Um, you know, the documentary is a prime example. It's been a really good tool for young people within the town to embrace where they live and actually see the bigger picture. Is it, is it important to you to be working in your community as well? Because you could try and go off to London to do something like this, couldn't you? Yeah. And that's the thing. I, you know, I love where I live. I, I, I don't want to, to, you know, move to the, to the big city, if you like. I want to be able to benefit the community where I am. Um, and no matter how long that takes, I will stick with it until I've achieved what I want to do. <laughs> I would make you a cup of tea, as you know. We make you a lovely cup of tea if you're here in the <laughs> studios, but sadly I can't do that. So we're going to play a bit of music. So you've got about three and a half minutes if you want to go and get yourself a cup of tea. Uh, I've, I've got one by my side. I'll be back with you in a minute. Guest with us on the show this afternoon, Joshua Fremantle, made his name with his uh, documentary about Lurstoft called uh, The Life of Lurstoft. Uh, spoken to him several times. He's got his own website, so you can have a look at uh, joshuafremantle.co.uk. He's uh, just become uh, a member of Access Community Trust, setting up a Sunrise Studios, part of Access Community Trust. So uh, uh, the thing the thing that I'm not sure you admit to too often, Joshua, is that you, you actually were born to other side of the border in Galston, weren't you? Yes, I was. You get me on that one all the time, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's only because it's only because I grew up in Norfolk as well. But so, but the border. I mean, it's Waveney Valley, isn't it? Really, Galston, Lurstoft, to all all yes. part of the same area. Uh, and and you went to school in the in the area and so on. Yeah, I went. I mean, I went to Kesselland Primary School, and then uh, from then on, I went to um, Pakefield High School. So, so you're fairly well versed in the area. So tell me when you had your first camera, when you knew photography was the thing you wanted to do. Um, so it was really, um, you know, I had, I had I'd always been using like a little point and shoot camera with a fixed lens on it. Um, before I'd started high school, I was like going on holiday and, and stuff like that, um, snapping away at um, you know, different landscapes and, and beaches and stuff like that. But then when I had started high school, uh, I always knew that as an option, as soon as I had hit year nine, I wanted to pick photography and media. Uh, so it was, it was my birthday of, of, of that year when I was uh, pr probably about 11 or 12 starting high school, I'd got my first DSLR. Um, and then I sort of went on from there, really, um, ex exploring from photography and, you know, expanding to uh, moving image. You talked about, you know, schools and, and the lack of practical help when you went to college as well. And I know that while you were at school, it was practical stuff you were more interested in, was it? Yeah. And I, I was quite, I think I was quite privileged as well, to be honest, uh, where, at, at Pakefield. Uh, I always had uh, the access to lots of opportunities. Um, and that's also where I met Phil Aves that um, I volunteered for and then subsequently um, sort of co-produced documentary uh, originally with him um to, to and you know and he also part funded it to to where it, it it came last year being released and um yeah i i, I certainly didn't have a lack of opportunities in high school oh it, it's it's amazing that that you can say at the age of 18 that you've produced a documentary when, when did you get the first idea was that through discussion with other people or, or was it that, did, was it because you see the heritage of Lurstoff stuff and you just wanted to paint a picture of it so i've I, i'd always wanted to create a documentary 
And I know that Lowestoft had a really rich history. Um, and one of the things that always struck out to me was the facts about it being one of the most heavily bombed uh, towns in the UK uh, during the war. And, you know, sort of key facts like that really struck out to me. And then I'd also remembered in memory that when meeting Phil, he had always said to me that things annoyingly had always got missed and not documented in lower soft light events uh, such as first light and i obviously came about at the prime time to be able to document them and you know who would have known then that a pandemic would was coming around the corner after that to put stop to big things like that do, do you think last stuff's had a bad press over the years are you trying to just to perhaps rectify that as well um I'm not gonna lie. I, I do. I do think Lowestoft yeah, has definitely been given uh, the, the wrong perceptions, and and has got you know bad press that it doesn't deserve. Um, you know, all places throughout the country have got, have got their flaws, and you know. Um, problems to, through various things but you you, you you brush all of that away in lower stuff and you look at what we've got around us we've got how uh, we were just saying earlier the Waveney Valley and, and Coulter Marsh is on our doorstop you know we've got a fabulous beach as well um, and one of the things that really struck out to me as well with the release of the documentary there was a couple that specifically moved down from Glasgow to Lowestoft because they saw the documentary and they really loved the place. And they came here um, a day after, um, no, sorry, uh, a day after they, they, they'd moved to Lowestoft. They uh, said in a, in a Zoom meeting that I was in that they, they, they really loved how friendly the people um, in the town were compared to in Glasgow. Oh, that's that's a huge thing, isn't it? That you actually your film actually persuaded someone to come and live in Lowestoft. Yeah, and you know it's it's just it's things like that where it just leaves me speechless, and I don't really know what to say. <laughs> so, so, so for those who haven't seen it, I mean, you can still go to YouTube and see it, can't you? Yeah, it's still on YouTube. Yeah, and uh, just search for Life of Lowestoft, and just give us uh, a little taster. I mean, heritage is is huge, as you say. Lowestoft has a fa fascinating history: the herring industry, uh, Eastern Coast Works. There's, there's a lot that's gone on. Is that what what was in Life of Lowestoft? Um, so we really sort of from the start, we delved into sort of, you know, where Lowestoft started, if you like. It's, it's, it's classed as one of the earliest settlements in the UK. Uh, we, we, we went back to talk about the, 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 uh, the fishing village um, and, the, you know, it had so many pubs down there, which is a really unique thing. Uh, we went to explore the lowest of scores, which are cutaways down the cliff edge that take you down from the old village up to the historic high street um, and documenting the restoration that was taking place to restore them. Um, and then we documented the events like the first like festival um, and also uh, went on to uh, really highlight what goes on in the town, like volunteers working hard to celebrate the town's history themselves through the likes of Heritage Open Days each year. It, it's, a, it's a great way. It's a, a great way to shine a light on uh, Lowestoft. Another break for travel news and then we'll come back and just tell me about some of the, the projects that I know you're planning for this coming year as well. So Joshua Fremantle is with us, uh, producer of Sunrise Studio. On the sofa. BBC Radio Suffer. Joshua with us then, Joshua Fremantle, producer of Sunrise Studio as part of Access Community Trust. Have you got used to hearing that said yet, Joshua? Um, yeah, and um, everyone loves the long title. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, cinema is cinematographer and development producer of Sunrise Studios. Uh, I shall just say from Sunrise Studios in the end. It's a I mean, it has to be, doesn't it, where the sunrise is the most easterly place. So it's, it's a, good t a good name for the studios. Oh, yes. It couldn't have been, it couldn't have been anything more fitting. No, it couldn't. So, so tell me about some of the things you're hoping to do over the next few months. Yeah, so this year, um, obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're getting close to, to, to halfway through 2021 already. It's kind of scary, isn't it? to think that. <laughs> yes. I know, really scary. Um, 
<laughs> but we're, we're looking at being able to offer uh, some workshops and um, a little bit of mentoring this year uh, through the likes of uh, learning how to um, script a um, sorry write a script for a short film um, and also hopefully later this year actually um, go to the lengths of producing it um, with me um, directing it and, and passing on my skills to other young people um, but we're also looking at doing some other um, different type of sort of activities if you like like outdoor and uh, an outdoor cinema uh, offering that is um, inclusive for everyone um, and that would be right across uh, different rural areas uh, in East Suffolk so not just in Lowestoft for that activity um, and then we've also you know keeping an eye on uh, all the opportunities that, that, that come ahead, really. But um, what I would really say is this kind of just like watch this space for Sunrise Studios. And if anyone is interested in the opportunities, they can sign up to our newsletter that is on the website and they literally just need to search for sunriselowestoff.com forward slash opportunities. Okay, sunrise at lowestoff.com to find out more about it as well. And, and I know you're also, you are looking for commercial work because that will help pay for everything else, won't it, as well. Tell me about it. What was the ad you did for Google? Uh, yes, so um, that actually featured um, Jimmy, um, always forget how to say his last name. Do- <laughs> um, Jimmy Doherty. From- Yes, um, from Jimmy's Farm. Um, so we filmed that in Woodbridge and that was actually part of um, one of Google's campaign to get people um, shopping locally. Uh, they did three, one in London, um, one in Cornwall and then one in Woodbridge. But so we actually um, we filmed that for a whole day, um, Paul's fish box Um to encourage people to use Google Maps to see when the best time was to go and um, support local. So, so you want more work like that, don't you? Really, at the moment as well. Yes, <laughs> it, it you know it it, um, it doesn't it um you know unlike a traditional um, production company, you know for us it's obviously um, it's not normal profit. It's it's reinvested uh, to benefit you know, local people while Sunrise Studios is run by local people. Well, it's, it's win-win, isn't it? People will learn as they do the jobs, but also the money you earn comes back in and makes it more possible for other people as well. It's a social enterprise. I think it's, it's great news. Joshua, congratulations on, on so many years of working hard and, and working towards Thank this. You, your, your dream is just starting, I think. What would you say to other young people who really have ambitions? Uh, what, what is your tip for, make, for, you know, for trying to make sure that they happen? Um, for me, I think it's never think it's over ambitious. Um, always, always go, always aim high. Um, and you, you know, you can always from that point then go slightly downwards to, you know, but there's, there's, I would say, you know, never think of an idea and then say to yourself, oh, that's not going to happen because, you know, my business plan is really ambitious, but through, you know, working hard and volunteering and, and, and building a portfolio, you can really, you know, have that as, um, you know, a selling point to be able to um, prove to other people what you can do. Well, you've done amazingly well so far and, and you're a name we all know as well, which can't be bad. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> Joshua. I look forward to hearing about your next film. Thank you, Leslie. <laughs> Joshua Fremantle. So have a look at the website, sunriselurstoft.com. He's got his own website as well. So if you search for Joshua Fremantle, you will find it. And if you want to see his film, go to YouTube, Life of Lowestoft.